In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve the collector feedback bias circuit. So we have a 12 volt voltage supply source. That's our VCC value. We're going to set RB equal to 300 kilo ohms and RC that's going to be set to one kilo ohm. This is the base. That's the collector. And this is the emitter, which we'll call point E. Now we're going to set our HFE value for the transistor, which is the same as beta, to 250. So in this problem, we want to calculate IB, IC, IE, and VCE. Feel free to pause the video if you want to try this problem. So first, we're going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law which states that the sum of the voltage drops in the closed loop is zero. So starting with VCC, our collector supply voltage, we're going to work our way towards the ground. So first we need to travel through RC. So we have minus the voltage drop across RC. And then we're going to travel through RB. So we're going to have minus the voltage drop across RB and then we're going to travel from the base to the emitter through the NPN transistor and so that's going to be minus VBE and that'll take us to the ground which has a potential set to zero volts. Now let's replace the values that we have here. Now what is the voltage across RC? We know that the current flowing through or to the collector of the transistor is IC. The current flowing through RB and into the base, that's going to be IB. And the sum of IB and IC, that's going to equal the current flowing out of the emitter, which is IE. Note that the current flowing through RC is the sum of IB and IC, which is technically IE. So VRC is going to be IE times RC. VRB, that's going to be IB times RB. And we know VBE is 0.7. It can vary between 0.6 and 0.7, but for this problem, we're going to use 0.7. Now I'm going to take these two terms and move it to the other side. So I'm going to have VCC minus 0.7, and that's going to equal IB times RB plus IE times RC. Now, we know that IE is the sum of the collector current and the base current. Now, the collector current is equal to beta times IB. So if we factor out IB, we can say that IE is going to be equal to beta plus 1 times IB. So here we have IB, RB, and then we're going to replace IE, the emitter current, with IB times beta plus 1 times RC. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the base current on the right side. So I'm going to have RB plus beta plus 1 times RC. And then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by this term. And so that's going to give me the final equation. IB is VCC, the collector supply voltage, minus 0.7 divided by RB plus beta plus 1 times RC. So now let's plug in everything that we know into that equation. So it's going to be 12 volts minus 0.7 divided by, so RB is 300 kiloohms. Beta is 250 plus 1, 
so that's 251, and RC is 1 kilo ohm. So 12 minus 0 0.7, that's 11.3. And 300 plus 251, that's 551. So 11.3 volts divided by 551 kilo ohms. That's going to give us the current, not in amps, but in milliamps. So it's 0 0.02051 milliamps. So that's the base current in this collector feedback bias circuit. So now that we know that, we can calculate the collector current, which is going to be the base current times IB. I mean, it's going to be beta times IB. So beta is 250 times the base current of 0 0.02051 milliamps. And so we're going to get a collector current of approximately 5.128 milliamps. Now, to calculate the emitter current, it's going to be the sum of the collector current and the base current. Well, technically, the collector current is 5.1275. I rounded it to 5.128. So if we add 5.1275 plus 0 0.02051, we can get an emitter current of 5.148 milliamps. So at this point, we can calculate VB and VC. VE is basically the ground voltage, that's zero. VB is 0.7 volts higher than VE. Now to get VC, VC is gonna be VCC minus the voltage drop across RC. So that's IE times RC. So it's going to be 12 minus a current of 5.148 milliamps times 1 kilo ohm. And so we're going to get 6.85 volts for VC. So VCE which is VC minus VE, that's just equal to VC, since VE is zero. So that too is 6.85 volts. Ideally, you want VCE to be half of the collector supply voltage to create the best amplifier circuit. And this is close to half of 12, half of 12 is six, so that's not too far off. Now let's talk about some of the advantages of this particular circuit. It's important to understand that when the temperature goes up, the DC beta of this transistor goes up as well, which means that for a given base current, IC is going to go up. So an increase in temperature leads to an increase in collector current. And keep in mind, there's a certain maximum value that the collector current could reach. Once it reaches its maximum value, it enters into saturation mode. Now this circuit is relatively stable against temperature changes. When the temperature goes up, we know beta goes up, the collector current goes up. As the collector current goes up, VC decreases. We know that VC is the difference between VCC and the voltage drop across RC. So as the temperature goes up, the collector current will go up. And as the collector current goes up, automatically the emitter current is going to go up. So this value will increase and it has a negative sign. So that leads to a decrease of VC. So an increase in IC causes the collector voltage to decrease. Now, as VC decreases, what happens to IB? Well, IB is equal to VC minus VB divided by RB. So if VC decreases, IB will decrease. Now, if IB decreases, what's going to happen to IC? IC is equal to beta times IB. 
So this will cause a decrease in IC. And that's why this circuit is very useful because it's relatively independent towards temperature changes. So as the temperature goes up, the collector current will increase, decrease in the collector voltage, which will lead to a decrease in the base current, and that's gonna bring down the collector current. So thus, we have a system of equilibrium, so to speak. When a temperature goes up, that increases the collector current, but the circuit is designed in such a way that the collector current is gonna go down, so that the collector current is relatively resistant towards temperature changes. So that's one of the advantages of this circuit. The collector current is relatively independent towards changes in beta, which are caused by changes in temperature. Now let's try this problem. So we still have the collector feedback bias circuit, but with an emitter resistor added to it. Feel free to solve this problem in the same way as we've solved the other one. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate IB. So using Kirchhoff's voltage law, let's start with VCC. Now working through RC, we're going to have minus VRC. And then traveling this way, we're going to subtract it by the voltage drop across RB. And then we're traveling that way. So that's minus the voltage drop between the base and the emitter pins of the transistor, and then minus the voltage drop across the emitter resistor. So VRC, that's going to be the emitter current times RC, and then VRB, that's going to be the base current times RB. VBE is 0.7, and VRE is going to be the emitter current times RE. So that's going to equal zero. So I'm going to have VCC minus 0.7. The other three terms, I'm going to move it to the right side. So I have IB times RB. And earlier in this video, we showed that IE is IB times beta plus one. So instead of having IE RC, it's going to be IB times beta plus one times RC. And then instead of plus IE, RE, it's going to be IB, beta plus 1, times RE. So now let's factor out IB on the right side. So we're going to have RB, that's a terrible looking B, plus beta plus 1, and then RC plus RE because they're both multiplied to beta plus 1. So now IB is going to be VCC minus 0.7 divided by RB plus beta plus 1 times the sum of RC plus RE. So that's the formula that we need in order to calculate the base current in this circuit. Now let's plug in everything. So we have 9 volts minus 0.7 volts divided by RB is 100 kilo ohms beta plus 1. Let's use the same beta that we use in the other problem. We're going to use 250. So beta is going to be 2, beta plus 1 is 251 and then RC is 300. RE is 200, so that adds up to 500. But we want it to be in kilo ohms, so because this is in kilo ohms. To convert ohms into kilo ohms, you need to divide by 1,000. 500 divided by 1,000 is 0.5. So we have 9 minus 0.7, so that's 8.3 volts divided by 100 plus 251 times 0.5. So the base current in this problem is 0 0.03681 milliamps. So now that we know the base current, we can calculate the collector current. So the collector current is going to be beta times the base current. That's 0 
times 250. So the collector current is approximately 9.2 milliamps. It's 9.2025, but I'm going to round that to 9.2. Now the emitter current is the sum of IC and IB. So 9.2025 plus 0 0.03681. And we could round that to 9.24. It's 9.23931. So now that we have the base current, the collector current, and the emitter current, we can now calculate VC, VE, and VB. So let's start with VE. So VE is just going to be the voltage drop across RE. I put IR. It's going to be IE times RE. So it's 9.24 milliamps times 0.2 kilo ohms, or you could say 0 0.00924 amps times 200 ohms. And you should get 1.848 volts for VE. Now, the VB is going to be VE plus 0.7 volts. So that's going to be 2.548 volts. Now let's calculate VC. So VC is going to be VCC, the collector supply voltage, minus IE times RC. So that's 9 volts minus 9.24 milliamps times RC in kilo ohms, which is 0.3 kilo ohms. So you should get a voltage of 6.228 volts. So that's VC. So now we can calculate VCE. That's going to be VC minus VE. And VC, we said that's 6.228 volts minus VE, which is 1.848 volts. So that's 4.38 volts, which is pretty good because in order to create a midpoint bias circuit where you have a very good amplifier, you want VCE to be one half of VCC. One half of nine is 4.5 volts. And so VCE is close to that, which is ideal for an amplifier. So that's it for this particular problem. So now you know how to solve the collector feedback bias circuit with an emitter resistor added to it. Thanks for watching.